you all are allowing delinquent employees to sit on their sofas at home instead of actually getting to work and doing their jobs. After calling an agency's employees lazy, Lauren Boebert got her ass handed to her. Welcome into TYT Overruled. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence. Please watch Lauren Boebert get torched by an official at the Social Security Administration. Uh, this is absolutely unacceptable. So our employees are working whether they are in the office or at home and they are- Are you monitoring the work that they are doing from home on a regular basis? Yes, we are. Uh, every, every employee, do you, have, do you have the numbers of the hours that are submitted? Are, are you counting how many times they're logging into their computers and responding to casework? So our employees are subject to the same performance management processes and oversight they are, whether they're teleworking or working in an office. And we have systems in place that our managers use to schedule, assign, and track workloads. And that includes individual employee workloads in many cases. So real-time understanding of what actions are being processed at any particular given time. Additionally, our employees are required to be accessible to their supervisors, clients, colleagues, and external parties during work hours via a variety of means, including instant messaging, video platforms and telephone. They are connected to the workplace, whether they are in the office or at the home. Th then why is the backlogs for Social Security applicants increased from 41,000 to 107,000? Because we've been historically underfunded for a number of years now. I don't we think are you're underfunded. You're, you're funded at the Nancy Pelosi levels, at the Democrat levels. We just continued that same funding. So I would say- At we pandemic level spending. So I'd say we have an increase of over 8 million beneficiaries over the last 10 years at the same time we experienced our lowest work staffing levels at the end of FY22. That's a math problem. I mean, that is a problem. If you have those workloads you know, increasing and you don't have the staff to take care of those workloads, you're going to have the backlogs that you're talking about, Representative. That gentleman there was the counselor to the commissioner of the Social Security Administration, Orrin H. McNelly. McNally was savvy enough to use Boebert's rude questions to highlight how the GOP slashing the Social Security budget has adversely impacted the agency's ability to do its work. Moments after Boebert tried to attack telework, she got called out on social media for teleworking herself. This December 2022 letter is just one example of how Boebert has taken advantage of proxy voting a time or two as a remote work option. And that wasn't Boebert's only ego blow of the day. While she was making a fool of herself before her colleagues, President Joe Biden was telling her constituents in Colorado how his Inflation Reduction Act gave them a boost, even though Boebert didn't want the act to pass. The historic investments we're celebrating today is in Congressman Boebert's district. She's one of the leaders of this extreme mega movement. She, along with every single Republican colleague, voted against the law that made these investments and jobs possible. And that's not hyperbole, that's a fact. And then she voted to repeal key parts of this law. And she called this law a massive failure. You all know you're part of a massive failure? Tell that to the 850 Coloradans who get new jobs in Pueblo and CS Win thanks to this law. Tell that to the local economy that's going to benefit from these investments. Do you think getting dragged like this will encourage Boebert to perhaps quiet down a bit before running her mouth? You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit those like and follow buttons, and thanks for watching.